Hi folks, welcome to part two of the Brajola series on PreservePantry.com video blog. Um, before I even begin, I want to make sure that you keep in mind that uh, if you want to see any other episodes, or if you want to see any of my recipes, uh, please go to PreservePantry.com. Uh, the recipes are on the recipes page, and uh, the videos are all under their specific um, title. You can also go to uh, YouTube.com and search for Preserve Pantry, uh, one word and uh, you can get all my videos from there. So, on to uh, the meat of the video. Um, in episode one, we uh, took our top round, um, or our eye of the round, and we trimmed it uh, to get all the fat and the silver skin and sinew and everything else off. Uh, and then we, we uh, put the, the dry cure on, and uh, we packaged it into Ziploc bags, put it in the fridge, and overhauled it, or flipped it, uh, every day and a half for seven days. So now it's been seven days, and um, it's time to uh, start phase two of the dry curing, um, in which we're going to take it out of our bags. We're going to uh, dry off all of the brine that's on there now, and we're going to put the second half of the dry cure that we made on there, repackage them, put them back in the fridge, and do the same thing over again. We're going to overhaul them or flip them every seven, every sorry, every day and a half. Um, and then after seven days, um, I'll show you the last part, um, which I'm also going to attach to the end of this video, um, where we tie it with butcher's twine and hang it up to dry. So the first step, take your meat out of the Ziploc bag, and uh, just go ahead and wrap it up in paper towels. Give it a good squeeze. Make sure you get all the moisture off the sides and top and bottom and everything. And then you can just go ahead and unroll it. And don't worry about the rosemary, it's all stuck to it because we're going to be adding plenty more of it. So now we take the second half of our dry cure and we go ahead and just rub it all over it. Make sure you get every inch of it, every little nook and cranny here. Get the sides. Okay, now you're going to put it into a fresh Ziploc bag. Don't reuse the one you had, in fact, throw that out with the brine in it. And we can go ahead and squeeze out as much air as we possibly can. And zip it closed. I like to put it inside of another Ziploc bag. Better safe than sorry. You don't really want meat juice, meat brine leaking all over your refrigerator, do you? So you got it all, got them all zipped up. Go ahead and put it back in the fridge. And like I said, do the same thing you did the first time around. Overhaul it uh, every day and a half. Just give it a flip. Put it back in there. And, uh, and that's it. Uh, Okay, so now that your brajola is finished curing, uh, the next step here is we're going to be tying it up and we're going to be setting it to hang in our cellar at uh, about 60 degrees and 60% humidity for hmm, three weeks, a month, maybe six weeks. Okay, the first step here is going to be to tie this brajola so that we can hang it in the curing cellar. So here you can see I have my brajola hanging up. Well, it's going to stay here for about a month. And uh, when it's ready to go, really all that needs to be done is cut down and uh, slice thin and eat it, however you want to. So thanks for tuning in to PreservePantry.com video blog. And make sure you come back soon. Uh, I'm going to have a whole lot more videos coming out in the next couple days. So make sure you keep your eyes peeled.